So yeah, let me just give you a, a very brief and very high level overview of the, the type of work that I do. Um, so uh, I work on a number of problems that are related to the interface of machine learning and scientific computing. And you know, one of the things that really motivated us to start working on this was uh, questions that are similar to the ones that were asked today about the, the dynamics and trainability of neural networks. And starting in 2018, Eric Van den Eyden and I uh, wrote a series of papers uh, that sort of tried to explain, you know, no, notions of trainability in terms of the dynamics of parameters, but rather than, you know, analyzing the, the individual values of the parameters themselves, we looked at it in a more distributional framework. Um, so this has become called the, the mean field limit for, for neural networks. It's kind of the, probably the more accurate picture of neural network training as compared to the NTK regime, uh, where you actually have evolution of the kernel. And so this can be viewed as a sort of dynamical extension of the uh, universal approximation theorems. So it's something that tells you that you are guaranteed global convergence of the training procedure in the overparameterized regime. Um, wh what's nice about this framework is that, you know, rather than having to look at the parameters themselves and do some sort of like landscape whispering, arguing about, you know, the, the nature of, of minimizers, you can work directly with the function representation. So you can impose regularity constraints and other types of, uh, you know, regularizations on the function representation itself. So, so that has motivated us to, to move in the direction of uh, trying to use neural networks in context and scientific computing where we need representations of naturally high dimensional functions. Uh, one of the, you know, one of the main things that, that we've worked on is related to sampling. Um, so, it, you know, in sampling, uh, metastability is kind of the, the fundamental issue. This is the, the rare events problem that we always encounter. Uh, and neural networks give you a, a kind of nice opportunity to directly represent distributions and, and sample from them using MCMC. Um, but using generative models where we have exact uh, posterior weights. Another context where we've explored this a lot is in uh, high dimensional control problems. So this is just showing a, a non-equilibrium control problem where we're, we're controlling the clustering of active Brownian particles through uh, a sort of dynamically learned external protocol. Um, so that's something that we're pursuing a lot in the context of, of biological self-assembly. Um, so the, the last thing that I'll, I'll briefly mention is that you know, we do a lot of machine learning for, for variational PDEs in the context of rare event sampling. So this is uh, something that's, that's used both for, for equilibrium and non-equilibrium rare events. Um, and you know, we've taken a lot of inspiration from the, the people doing equivariant neural networks to, to build representations of these sorts of things that are scalable. Um, so on the left, this is just showing a, a sort of non-equilibrium variational PDE that we solve, which is related to, to large deviation theory. Um, and this allows us to build a sort of non-equilibrium phase diagram for active systems. And on the right, it's showing you a, a different type of variational PDE that arise, uh, arises in, uh, in equilibrium stat mech, which is related to, to reactive trajectories and reactive paths. And so there, you know, we can solve these, these PDEs now in uh, dimensions that even five or six years ago, I would have probably told you is completely impossible. Um, you know, I mean, these are, so the, the one on the right is for, okay. for a protein, right, so. All right, thank you.